Mylar 110, runway 33, wind 330. Under the shroud of pre-dawn darkness, flight Mylar 11 roars out of Louisiana's Barksdale Air Force Base. It's the start of one of the longest military missions in the world, a non-stop 33-hour flight by this B-52 strategic bomber group to the other side of the world, flying near Russia, China, North Korea, and back. As you can see, it's dark outside. Uh, the cockpit has red light once again for the night vision here. CNN is the first news crew ever allowed on one of these extensive B-52 missions. Not only are we one of the most visible and flexible legs of the nuclear triad, we can have a B-52 where you need it, when you need it, within 48 hours. These flights are intentionally high profile. Two years into the war in Ukraine, as Russia challenges the U.S. and NATO, the Kremlin is meant to know about our bomber flight. So is China, with Beijing pressuring Taiwan and Chinese Coast Guard vessels harassing ships of the Philippines, a U.S. ally. Both the national leadership of Russia and the national leadership of China, what do they react to? We see that they publicly comment about our bomber task force missions, particularly when it involves others in very joint and public ways. Tiger one, contact. Oh, one contact. Five hours into the flight, we hit our first of four aerial refuelings off Alaska's coast, taking on as much gas as we can. Keep a track of your own fuel stake. I'd like for you guys to stay with us all the way to Yankee Zoo Papa. After an hour of formation flying during this refuel, we arc out over the Pacific and towards Japan. It's important that we communicate to our partners that we mean what we say when we say that we're committed to our alliances. That's an example of what the B-52 does. We show up when we're asked. This 63-year-old Boeing B-52 Stratofortress, decades older than its crew, shows its age, but it remains the Air Force's primary bomber, taking part in every U.S. war since Vietnam. With planned upgrades to its antiquated systems, it'll see nearly a century of service. This year, the U.S. began producing its next-generation B-21 bomber. China is close behind, promising their H-20 strategic stealth bomber will be unveiled soon. 20 seconds to the turn, zero, five, zero. Thank you. On board Mylar 1-1, we pass by Russia's east coast, closer to meeting up with U.S. and Allied fighter jets. Our flight is unarmed. The mission is not to attack, but to prevent attack, to deter. But this is a bomber, of course. If we were carrying nuclear weapons, the Air Force would monitor the flight from the Joint Nuclear Operations Center back in Louisiana, seen here on news camera for the first time. It's a 24-7 operation, tracking all ballistic missile silos and airborne nuclear weapons. On the ground, crews train to turn the aircraft into an offensive platform. Munitions teams, or MUNs as they're known on base, assemble weapons. Outside, loading teams marry bombs to bomber. B-52 can carry up to 70,000 pounds of bombs. You ready to fly? Ready to fly. All right, your jet. It is a marathon of marathons to put the B-52 and its crew virtually anywhere in the world. At this point, we've uh, passed the halfway point of the flight. We've been in the air more than 16 hours. It's the middle of the day here in Japan where we're uh, overflying at the moment en route to the mission area where we'll meet up with uh, fighters from several other countries here and carry out an exercise. Here, on the edge of the East China Sea, fighter jets from Japan and South Korea take up formation off our wings. Hours earlier during our flight, North Korea test-fired a mid-range ballistic missile, a reminder of the threats in the Pacific. You want to be seen by both allies and adversaries, do you? We want to be seen by allies and adversaries. It is still a head-turner it, it when is. you take it around the world. It is. But it's China that the U.S. is watching most closely. In October, a Chinese fighter jet intercepted a B-52 flying over the South China Sea at night, coming within 10 feet of the bomber. By number of ships, China has the world's largest navy, and will soon have the world's largest air force, according to the commander of U.S. Indo-Pacific Command. Beijing is rapidly modernizing its military, including its strategic forces, and they're not part of any non-proliferation treaty, obscuring their nuclear assets. After 19 hours of flying and 14 more to go, a warning light signals trouble with one of the plane's main engines. The crew runs through the checklists. Throttles, number five. Confirm five. Confirmed. They make the decision to shut down the engine. There is no panic, just a management of risk. Nearing the 30-hour mark of the flight, we see our second sunrise over Washington State's Mount Rainier. And although the crew is tired, they all know there's still a, a, a critical task ahead, and that is getting the B-52 back on the ground, and that is one of the most difficult parts of the mission. On final approach, the B-52, 
which has been in the air nearly 15 hours longer than the longest commercial flight in the world, has one final surprise. That one gear not down. A firm right main gear is not down. Let's go ahead and emergency, emergency extended. Flight Mylar 11 touches down at 3 in the afternoon after 33 hours in the air, a mission that showed the abilities and the age of a jet that remains critical to the Air Force. Despite how many years the B-52 has been running, she is a tough girl. 